Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, our guest is Justin Zalewski. Justin is the Director of Product Design and Strategy at Studio Science. He leads a team of talented product designers and works with clients to solve business problems through design. He and his team are experts in rapid prototyping and running experiments to more quickly learn from and deliver value to customers. He has led projects with clients ranging from market-leading tech companies to Fortune 500 brands. Some of his clients include Angie, Genesis, Simon, Stack Overflow, and Cummins. So without further delay, sit back, plug your earphones in, and let's jump right into this conversation with Justin. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Now, could you share with us in your own words... Just a little bit about your journey, how you got to where you are today. Yeah, of course. So I I started in the world of design and and, uh, the way I started was a little more in the world of graphic design. And that led me into just kind of a natural curiosity into the more technical side of things. And so I started kind of branching out from just the the visual design of things and, and visual communication into building things and figuring out how things work. So getting into code, building websites, building apps. And that led me into product design. So figuring out what is the, the UX, the user experience of making sure that these kinds of things are intuitive, easy to use, fun to use, um, and really meeting customer needs. And that caused me to broaden my lens, um, especially the last uh, 10 years in my time at Studio Science, to broaden my lens and especially adopt a service design mindset. So looking across the whole customer journey from everything they're doing, you know, with a digital product, outside of a digital product, their in-person interactions, um, the, the way that the organization delivers a service to a customer. And uh, one of the things that, that I've been really passionate about lately and getting really excited about is how we use our design skill set and, and looking through the business world at, at, with that lens to bring people together, bring siloed, disparate departments together in pursuit of that common goal. Because really everybody wants to serve the customer, right? We're all just coming at it from different angles. And so what, uh, what, where I'm at today is being able to use that design skill set, not just for improving visual design or UX, but actually to bring people together to create a better service and a better experience for customers. All right. Amazing. So customer and product design. Now, tell us a little bit about Studio Science. What is Studio Science and what does Studio Science do? So Studio Science is a design and innovation firm, and our purpose is to help businesses design with people as opposed to for people. So we solve this in a variety of ways, but if I can sum it up, it comes down to this. Customer experience depends on meeting people's needs, right? And people's needs are constantly changing. So businesses have to constantly change too. And we know that this is hard. So where we come in is we help businesses, one, understand what their customers need, and then two, deliver solutions to meet those needs. Obviously, that's super vague. So to get more specific, we do a lot of work with large enterprise companies, and they're in a lot of cases in a place where they've enjoyed long-term success, but what got them here won't get them to that next stage. So more often than not, the way these large companies are set up doesn't allow them to innovate well because they're not built to move quickly. There's all kinds of bureaucratic structure that's in place, you know, a lot of times for understandable reasons, but it, it ends up hindering this kind of evolution that's needed to meet customer needs. So when we speak with people that are responsible for advancing customer experience at an organization like this, a lot of times they're frustrated, sometimes even feeling hopeless because they've been banging their head against the wall trying to make progress in their organization. But that's where we can come in. We can act as their modern design team from the outside when it's not possible to operate that way from the inside. So we can build an understanding of customer needs, match that up with business goals. And then, as you mentioned, you know, we are big fans of rapid prototyping. 
we prototype those solutions so you can learn really quickly without having to, to build and roll out a full solution. We're building to learn rather than building just to, to launch things, right? Um, and that's the best way to align what a business is offering to what customers actually need. Mm, all right. Okay, so Studio Science is onto some great stuff there. Now, what has been your experience? Um, you, I noticed you mentioned in ensuring that you deliver a great experience to your customers because businesses are continually changing. Your, you need to continually change or customers are continually changing rather. You need to continually change. So maybe could you share with me one or two trends that you've seen in the customer experience space that you think is critical for a business to constantly be looking at to ensure that they are keeping current with the needs of their customers? Yeah, I think it all comes down to measuring the right kinds of things. And what is challenging and what we see a lot of organizations struggling with is that the things that are easiest to measure, those quantitative kinds of things where you can, you know, if you've got a digital product or a website, you can throw up Google Analytics or your platform of choice super quickly and you can measure all kinds of uh, all kinds of the what's, you know, how many people are visiting, how many people are doing this kind of thing within their app. And that's all valuable. But to really get to the the deeper levels of evaluating customer experience and figuring out, you know, are we headed in the right direction? Are we actually solving a need for our customers? You got to dig into the qualitative side of it as well, the, the why behind it all to figure out like, all right, we can see that this thing is happening. You know, our, our customers are are downloading our, our product or they're they're signing up for uh, this this offering. Um, they're buying these things in our, our e-commerce store, but why are they or aren't they doing this this thing we thought would be a, a big hit? Mm-hmm. And so that's where I think digging in and just making sure that you're tied in with your customers via you know and any variety of, of methods uh, for qualitative research, be that interviews, workshops, you know, developing relationships like having a customer advisory board where you've got those close relationships with customers where you can just go and talk to people uh, really quickly where there's not there's not a chance for that barrier and that space to develop between a business and their customers because that's what leads to misalignment and you know shipping things that don't actually fit what the customer needs mm-hmm. brilliant all right um, now in addition to what you've shared could you also share with us, why do you think it's important for not only the customer experience but the employee experience to ensure that your alignment in terms of needs is not just on the CX end but it's also on the EX end and you know how you know what does that look like in terms of it being beneficial to both Exactly great questions because there's <laughs> there's no way to separate the customer experience from the employee experience. The employees are what makes it possible to actually deliver a customer experience um, and especially a good customer experience. Um, And there's also, and I'm sure we've all seen these kinds of things happening or or read about it in the news with Amazon or otherwise, it's also very possible to, for an organization to deliver a great customer experience at the expense of the employee experience and how that's not sustainable and it allows all these problems to, to grow and fester. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's really impossible to separate the two. And so what, uh, what, what I advocate for and what Studio Science advocates for is actually bringing the two together. And there's a variety of different ways to do this, but we found the best way is through a service design approach. And so there's a lot of different aspects to that, but uh, one example and one really helpful tool that's part of a service design approach is to develop a service blueprint. So you, you might be familiar with a, uh, a customer journey map right? or you're mapping out, you know, here's what a customer is experiencing at, at different stages of their journey with us. Uh, think of a service blueprint as adding on another layer to that of not just what is the customer experiencing, but what is the business doing to enable that experience? What, uh, what are our people, what are, what was our staff doing? What kinds of technology do we have in place that is enabling those Uh, that experience and especially mapping it out of that high level allows us to pinpoint like what are the points of friction and and why like what's what's happening 
Um, but also it, it's a great tool to bring people together and figure out, um, all right, like we can see there's an issue here. Is that a technology problem? Is that uh, something where a department is just totally overwhelmed and overloaded and you know we, we haven't really developed an understanding about that today? And then how can we solve that together rather than just you know trying to brute force a better experience um, in a way that's just you know not going to be feasible because people can only do so much. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you for sharing. Uh, now, could you also share with us, Justin, what is the one online resource, tool, website, or app that you absolutely can't live without in your business? Yeah, for me, it is Slack. And so, uh, especially in this remote collaborative world, uh, we've been on Slack for you know several years, uh, you know, even before the the pandemic, where we really leaned into remote work. Um, and I know other folks are on different systems. Um, I know you know Microsoft Teams has <laughs> gained a lot of ground. Uh, I'm a big Slack fan. I think it it's a way to cut down on email, um, really emphasize the the quick kind of asynchronous collaboration that just helps a, a business run and helps bring people together. Brilliant. All right. So Slack. And um, we've had quite a few guests on prior to you that also indicated Slack was one of their go-to tools. So that's good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, could you also share maybe one or two books that have had a big impact on you? It could be a book that you read recently or even one that you read a very long time ago, but it still has left, you know, a pretty big, you know, impact on you. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, it's so hard to narrow down to to a couple, but the ones that come to mind most readily are one that I read a while back. It's a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, uh, I might mispronounce his name, but uh, Daniel Kahneman, I believe, um, you know, behavioral economist that um, that wrote about basically like two systems of thinking, like our our fast thinking brains and our slow thinking brains and all kind of like the biases that develop because of how we're built to think. And it just has all these these implications that has really changed the way I think about a lot of uh, my own interactions in my own life. But also when I, you know, try to empathize and understand like how uh, other other partners and colleagues in in business are are looking at things or how our customers are, are perceiving a, a solution or their experience. Um, it's been really eye opening. The the other I would cite is Inspired by Marty Kagan. Um, it's a book really all about product management, but it's uh, I'd, I'd say it it opens up some lines of thinking even outside of product management. Uh, really just about how to rapidly iterate, really learn quickly from customers, and all the different ways you can test solutions in a really lean cheap way without needing to invest a lot of money into it all right amazing okay thank you so much for sharing Mm -hmm. now could you also share with us what's one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about either something you're working on to develop yourself or your people yeah yeah great question so I'm really excited for for myself and then also to to share this with my team and try to foster this this kind of mindset of making space and so i i I think and it it seems like it's it's only you know snowballing and and getting more um more common these days that the people are just very scattered um torn in a lot of different directions and so bringing focus and creating space to be focused on uh on the highest priority things i think is a really valuable thing i I won't say it's undervalued because i think there are a lot of people that are are beginning to emphasize that more and more um but it's increasingly challenging in the in the world just because there are so many distractions so many things calling for our attention and so uh finding ways to focus to prioritize and and to really be mindful about what we're spending time on um, is something i've been really focusing on lately for for myself, um, but also trying to bring that to those around me and my team. Mm. Okay, sounds awesome. Now, we do have a lot of persons that listen to this podcast who are business owners as well as managers, um, and they believe that their companies have great products and services, but from time to time, they do lack constantly motivated human capital, so the people 
are not mm. as motivated. If you are sitting across the table from one of those persons today, what's the one piece of advice that you'd give them to increase or improve the motivation and have a successful business? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure these folks have heard uh, a lot of things about making sure people have the the motivation from a, a strong mission and vision for a company. And that is all, I think, really critical. And, and you, it's hard to do much without that. But if I can add something new that, that they might not have heard as much about before, it's the concept of involving the the employees and, and you know, even even partners, um, anybody that you're working with to deliver value to your customers, involving them in the process of co-creating solutions rather than dictating solutions and process to them. And so when you're thinking about, you know, hey, like we're going to develop this new product, we're going to sell it this way, we're going to deliver it to customers this way, rather than it being entirely a top down approach that's uh, you know, this is strong language, but forced upon the the employees. I think you'd be surprised how powerful it is to actually involve the employees and the team in coming up with the the solution. And so, some of the ways that we do that are are actually you know just starting by talking with employees, um, but also getting their input, um, running workshops on like here's the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, we know that you live in this world every day. Like, what do you see? What's your perspective? And how can we actually like make this kind of outcome for the business? Um, and I think, you know, bringing those perspectives together, one, it's proven to actually generate better solutions and more feasible solutions because it comes from the people that are actually be carrying out the work. Mm -hmm. But two, it, it gets people involved. It gets, gets their buy-in on the solution and helps them feel more involved rather than a cog in the machine. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So a high level of inclusivity. So they feel like they're a part of where the company is going, the decisions that are made. And of course, you get greater buy-in, which means you get hopefully increased motivation. And people feel like they're a part of something bigger than just the operational stuff that they do every day. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, could you also share with us, Justin, our listeners would have tapped into this episode they would like to connect with you and so they would like to know where can they find you online yeah so linkedin is pretty much the only social network where i am active anymore um so i'll be happy to provide my, my linkedin bio i'll be happy to connect with anyone chat more at any point i've also got uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about me you can go to justinsaluski.com if you want to learn more about studio science you can go to studiosciencecom but uh, again, yeah, we'd be happy to connect with anyone and chat more. Great. All right. Now, before we wrap our episodes up, we always like to ask our guests, do you have a quote or a saying that during times of adversity or challenge, you'll tend to revert to this quote? It kind of helps to get you back on track or get you refocused if for any reason you got derailed. Yeah. And, and sorry, uh, you're saying, um, is there any quote that helps to kind of get things back on track that we, we can like come back to as a point of motivation right do you have like a quote or a saying that that maybe you revert to during those times of adversity or challenges that you may face and that kind of helps to get you back on track yeah i'm i'm bad at quotes but i'll, I'll give kind of the sentiment behind the the idea okay um and i'm sure there are folks that have have said it better um but it comes down to like there's there's only so much you can do at at one time. Um, I I will will attempt to quote something I read recently where um, someone that that took I think a very sensible approach to to life of not chasing after you know always always the next thing always bigger and better, um, but realizing that you know all, all you can do is worry about like what am I uh, what am I going to do today to make the most out of today. Uh, rather than worry so much about um, you know the, the you know next week next month next year which I really have little control over <laughs> and so I think taking a, a reasonable perspective of you know here are the things that I can control and influence today um, and here are the things that I I can't and I can just do do my best to be prepared for when those kinds of things do come up um, really helps me to just you know take a little bit of the pressure off in moments of stress and and refocus myself to it's really important.
Brilliant. All right. Great. Well, thank you, Justin, for sharing that. We'll definitely have that in the show notes of this episode. So just want to tell you thank you so much for hopping on to our podcast, navigating the customer experience and sharing some of these great insights as it relates to um, customer experience design, as well as you know ensuring that as an organization, you look to not just satisfy the needs of your customers, but you also your employee needs. Um, and you know the value that you brought to both myself and our listeners, I think is really great at a time that people are really looking at how are they going to position themselves for 2023 as we exit one calendar year and jump into the next? And what are some areas that really need to be given that high level super focus to ensure that they can stay on top of their game in their industry and really give their customers what they're looking for, both on an internal and an external level. So thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Just want to remind our listeners that you can join our private Facebook group navigating the customer experience community and feel free to follow us on twitter at navigating cx until next time i'm your host yannick grant we also have a new book available on amazon the abcs of a fantastic customer experience it's available in ebook and paperback so if you want to increase revenue in your organization build a stronger service culture, and create employees or develop employees who are really mastering service delivery in your business, you need to grab a copy of this book. Until next time, I'm your host, Yannick Grant.